Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. That's the key. You have to believe in something that you can't see. You have to believe when you don't see no way how. You have to buckle down and keep believing. Everything God wants you to have, he puts it in your imagination. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. And he puts it in your imagination so you can see what he got for you. So if you've been imagining that you're going to be rich one day, it's because God wants you to be rich. Now, when you're going to ask him for it, and are you going to wait for it to happen? Or are you going to lose faith? I've been wanting to be on TV since I was 10 years old. You know how old I was before I got on TV? 38. 28 years after I wrote it on the paper. I won't be on TV. It took me 28 years to get on TV. But it happened at an appointed time. I just never gave up the faith. I kept going because I didn't know how to quit. Because I know if I quit, it cannot happen. But if you stay with it, if you stay with it, you have no idea what can happen for you. You, you can't quit, man. You got to stay with it. It's somebody having it way harder than you and they didn't give up. Will there be some times that you want to give up? Yes. When you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Never give up then, and that is so important. When you're working on doing the things you want to do and fulfilling your dream, and things happen, there are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. If you've decided that this is what you want to do. You've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself, to face it and step forward. We all face difficulties that don't look like they'll ever change. We don't see any sign of things improving. It's easy to live discouraged and accept that it's not meant to be. What you're up against may look permanent. Seems like it's going to take years to get well, years to meet the right person. Don't be fooled by what you see. Trouble is only temporary. Soon you're going to see the breakthrough. You may not see how this can happen. You're looking at it in the natural. We serve a supernatural God. He can make things happen that you can't make happen. Joel, it's already been a long time. That means you are very close to seeing it turn around. You're about to see freedom, promotion, dreams suddenly come to pass. Soon that new door is going to open. Soon, you're going to come into overflow. As long as you think it's going to take years, that's going to stop God from working. When you have this soon mentality, you get up each morning with expectancy. This could be the day that God shows out in your life. God owns it all. One touch of his favor and you'll have more than enough. One idea, one contract, and everything will change. Your mind will tell you all the reasons it's not going to happen. The people that you're up against are too powerful. It's been that way too long. Don't believe those lies. The problem will soon be over. The loneliness will soon be gone. These present troubles will not last very long. The scripture says rain falls on the just and the unjust. The rain doesn't discriminate. Don't get discouraged by difficulties. It's just life. It's not that trouble won't come, but the trouble is not going to last. When you're in difficulties, came down with an illness, people at work turned on you. It's easy to live worried. You have to remind yourself it is not permanent. Soon it will resolve. When Job looked at all his circumstances, all that he had lost, he got depressed. One reason he was so discouraged is he saw the trouble as permanent. As long as he had this forever mentality, he felt overwhelmed. When you have a setback, thoughts will tell you it's permanent. You'll never be happy again. If you believe those forever lies, you'll get discouraged and lose your passion. If the trouble was too much, the sickness too great, he wouldn't have allowed it. 
It's a test. What are you going to do? Give up on dreams, live defeated? Or are you going to believe that God is on the throne? That the trouble is temporary? That it's not going to last long? And at one point, Job changed his attitude. He got up out of the ashes, looked up toward the heavens, and said, I know my Redeemer lives. I know this difficulty can't stop my destiny. He shifted to an attitude of faith. God let us see both sides of Job to let us know it's okay to feel things. It's okay to start there, but don't finish there. Don't stay defeated. At some point, you have to do like Job and say, I know my Redeemer lives. I know this problem is not permanent. Lord, thank you that it will soon be over. When you live with this soon mentality, all the forces of darkness cannot keep you down. Job's situation looked permanent, but God not only turned it around, but Job came out with twice what he had before. God never brings you out the same. He makes the enemy pay for bringing the trouble. The entire book of Job is about his struggle. You would think it went on for 40 years, but some commentaries believe the whole struggle was only nine months. What you think is going to take years. Like with Job, it's going to happen sooner than you think. You're about to see his hand bring healing, divine connections, promotion. It's not by your might, but by the spirit of the living God. The sickness, depression, anxiety is not going to stop your destiny. Why don't you get in agreement with God? You may not see how. The sickness too great, the opposition too strong. You're not in this by yourself. The Most High God is fighting for you. Sooner than later, you're going to see the hand of God turning situations around that look impossible. But it's easy to live with this forever mindset switch over to a soon mentality. I know some things take time, but God promises us in this verse, soon the trouble will be over. What if I believe and this doesn't happen? What if you believe and it does happen? It probably won't happen if you've already accepted a long time to get well, to meet the right person, to accomplish that dream. I'm asking you to believe for sooner than later even if it doesn't happen as soon as you like. But I've made up my mind, I'm going to live with the soon mentality. The trouble is temporary. You may be in a difficult time, but that's not how your story ends. That person that walked away, the bad break, the unfair situation is not going to stop your purpose. After the trouble, there's going to be great joy in your life. Don't be discouraged by the trouble. It's not stopping anything God has for you. You're not losing anything. What belongs to you is still coming your way. Your latter days will be better than your former days. Your story doesn't end in defeat. Injustice, sorrow, those are temporary seasons. God has already lined up and after this for you. He said what was meant for your harm, he's turning to your advantage. You're about to step in to an advantage, step into favor that God has already lined up for you. If you'll stay in faith, you're going to come in to your after this. Come back to a place of peace. God is going to get you to your destiny. That cancer is not bigger than our God. That breakup didn't stop your purpose. God is behind the scenes right now working in your life. Your time is coming. It's going to happen sooner than you think. Doubtless. You can't have no doubt. You can't have no doubts. I'm not talking about other people believing for you. You got to believe this for yourself. Being successful is not a magic trick. You just have to learn the principles of success. I am telling you, Your education ain't got nothing to do with it. It's your dreams and visions. A man without a dream or vision should perish. Now, when you gonna ask him for it, and are you gonna wait for it to happen? Or are you gonna lose faith? Well, I guess it wasn't the Lord's will. Who are you? How you know what God's will is? 
It all happens at an appointed time, but you have to stay in faith for the appointed time to happen for you. You've got to sell yourself every day on your abilities, on the goal that you want to reach. You can learn all the techniques in the world. If you don't believe in yourself, it won't happen for you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day, and nothing out here is going to stop me. It's possible to finish something before you start. In fact, it would be a bit foolish to start until you had it finished. So human beings have this remarkable ability to finish something and then start. We've heard the old expression, don't count your chickens until they're hatched. Say, no, we have the ability to count our chickens long before they're hatched. Because we know, we have faith, we believe. We use the law of averages. As there's, there's bound to be at least so many out of every dozen, out of every hundred, out of every fifty. So it's possible to see the end, then begin. Start looking into the future of what you would like to accomplish, where you would like to go, the person you would like to be, and see if you can't get a better picture of the finished objective. See yourself there, see yourself in possession of. I was in business with Bob Cummings, the old movie star for a while. He said, decide what you want and then act as if you already had it. And being an actor, he could give us a few tips on acting. Decide what you want and act as if it was already yours. Now, the reason we can act thinking that it's already ours is because not only can we vision the end results, we can also vision the beginning of making it real. So we don't start till it's finished, but it is possible for human beings to finish something before they start. Human beings are the only life on earth that has this incredible capacity to change the course of your life. No other life form can do that. Every other life form except human seems to operate simply by instinct in the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one. I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No, no, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. Are you letting your circumstances talk you out of what God put in your heart? Now you've quit believing. God still wants to bring it to pass, but you have to get in agreement with him and say, God, I still believe it can happen. The odds are against me, but I still believe I can accomplish my dream. I was raised in dysfunction but I still believe I can set a new standard. Thoughts whispering, you'll never beat the right person. You can't pass that college course. If you start dwelling on it, these problems are so big. I don't see how it can work out. Before long, you'll be negative. Don't take the bait. Those are lies to try to defraud you out of your purpose. Do yourself a favor, ignore it. Just say, no thanks, I still believe. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. When you don't see no way how, you have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. 
As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do. Simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. If you've messed up your health for 10 years, I'm telling you, it takes more than 10 days to get it back. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill and say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's gonna change everything. So, five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place. A place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect, a place that'll give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face and we face the direction we design. Don't get talked out of what you're believing for. You had every right to give up. The setback should have talked you out of it. You haven't seen any sign of things changing. All the facts say it's impossible. Your attitude is, that's okay. God can do the impossible. Don't get talked out of your dreams. The disappointment is not going to cause you to get discouraged. People who don't believe in you is not going to dampen your faith. The environment you were raised in is not going to stop your destiny. Your time is coming. What God put in your heart is still on the way. Guess how quickly you can change your health by starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough You've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it, that's over. I'm gonna now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is, yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? It looks like you're not going to do it. 
Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just commit it to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you and you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's gonna make me so healthy I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now, if you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. Saying, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said, just two apples? Says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing just you and yourself you've convinced yourself i'm on my way to the healthiest i ever have been i'm starting a new life this is the second day i'm on my way that's how easy it is to change your life you don't need some dramatic vision just begin something and maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do you just get back on a better track okay it's a small journey to changing direction. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. To discover your purpose, to find yourself. What a wonderful thing. That's what our subject is about today. And if you don't have the tough, tenacity, God-anointed, purpose-driven life, you will give up and walk away. But there are some of us that have nothing to walk away to. If it's fight, we just got to fight. We're like the woman with the issue of blood. If I have to crawl to get there, then I'm getting on my knees. I still got to go. But there's a second challenge. Once we find our purpose, discover why we're here, there's a second challenge that we have that we face, and that is to lose ourselves. And, and we lose ourselves when our purpose becomes bigger than us. It, to find a purpose, how important. But then to take that purpose and place it in a position with people that has eternal factors involved is to lose yourself and to go to another whole level of life and another level of living. Very few people find themselves and lose themselves. Place that purpose in a position that is so much bigger than us that we can literally lose ourselves in the process. In a time of change that's taking place around the world, in a time when people are feeling a great deal of anxiety and fear, and reservations about the future at a time when people are going to work and don't know whether or not they will have a job when they get off and not necessarily because of their performance but because of what's happening in the economy at a time when there are challenges more so than ever before in personal relationships that many times i'm sure that we've all taken time just to stop and reflect many times when we hear what's happening in the news or read the newspapers and so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do will enable us to do some things and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Because once you find that, it puts you in your power place. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? Once you identify it, you have to invest in it. You have to support it. You have to put yourself in an environment where you can shine. So the first question we have to ask ourselves this morning is how do we find ourselves? That's challenge number one. And we find ourselves by when we discover our purpose. The world is such, so full of apathy. It's so full of average. A person with passion always stands out. It sets us apart 
it sets us above the crowd. That once you have passion and once you have a, a sense of energy in your life, it just sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It already gives you what I would call a head start in success in life. There are way more followers in the world than there are leaders. Never assume people think of you the way you think of yourself. What perceptions are you creating? If you're going to put these negative perceptions out there about yourself, at least be conscious of it. So I'm saying that we have to work through the challenges of life in learning how to begin to work to fortify ourselves. I can live my dream. I can find my purpose in life. I deserve more for myself. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. Why is it that most people don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it? I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us. We don't believe that we deserve it. So let's talk about it. Never assume people think of you way you think of yourself. Once you decide to put these perceptions out there in the universe, if you're not content with the way most of the people think of you, now you're on a mission to change those perceptions. When you change those perceptions, people are going to either decide to roll with you or not. You have been blessed with so many gifts and talents, natural gifts, that if you unleash everything that you're capable of doing on the world at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be too much. You are a gift from God. You have so many talents. If you drop too much on people at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. There are going to be plenty of times in your life when you're not happy. There might be years. And so it's a shallow boat in a very rough ocean. Happiness is something that descends upon you. Everyone knows that. It comes upon you suddenly. And then you should be grateful for it because there's plenty of suffering. And if you happen to be happy, wonderful. Enjoy it. Be grateful for it. And maybe try to meditate on the reasons that it manifested itself. Because it, it can come as a mystery, you know. You, you don't necessarily know when you're going to be happy. Something surprising happens and delights you. And you can analyze that. You can think, well, I'm doing something right. I'm in the right place right now. I've done something right. Maybe I can hang on to that. Maybe I can learn from that. What you should be pursuing instead is you should be pursuing who you could be. That'd be the first thing. It's like, because you're not who you could be and you know it. You have guilt and shame and, and regret. You berate yourself for your lack of discipline and your procrastination and all your bad habits. You know perfectly well that you're not who you could be. And God only knows who you could be. And so that's how you should be strive. That's what you should be striving for. And associated with that, you should be attempting to formulate some conception of the highest good that you can conceive of, that you can articulate. Because why not aim for that? Your life is short and it's troublesome. And perhaps you need to do something worthwhile with it. And if so, then you should do the most worthwhile thing. Figure out what that is for you and to dispense with those parts of you that are unworthy. And then maybe if you're fortunate and you do that carefully, then happiness will descend upon you from time to time. And that's the best you've got. And then also perhaps during sorrowful times, the fact that you've strengthened your character and that you're aiming at the highest that you can conceptualize, that'll give you the moral fortitude to endure without becoming corrupted during those times. So here's what I'm suggesting. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast you have to literally run to stand still, I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. And I'm here to tell you, there are a whole bunch of you out there. You're adding value to the dream of somebody that you're working with. You're making a difference. So your purpose may not be just for personal use. It may be for corporate use or collective use. It may be bigger than you. Does that make sense? Passion. But the second question we ask ourselves is not only what am I passionate about, but what are my strengths? What am I good at? 
What is my spiritual giftedness? Because when God created you, he gave you gifts, spiritual strengths to enable you to find and fulfill your purpose. Disciplines undone in the future give us poor results. Discipline managed well gives us good results. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. If you're skimpy on your dreams, that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. Goals are like a magnet. They pull. And the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals, here's what they also do. They pull you through, pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through distraction on every side that says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. At the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time, if you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy. You know, you can actually change the direction of your life. You actually have a say-so in how your life goes. Life is not designed where you just wake up and see how it go and you react. You have a determining voice into where your life can go. Your future is in your hands. You know what that means? You got to work on your mind. You got to upgrade, level up your skill set. You want to be in a community of collaborative, supportive relationships that's going in your direction. And anybody that don't have the mindset that you have, let them go. I was trying to help my twin brother lose weight. I gained 25 pounds. Because when you speak and talk to people, you dilute your energy. A person who's not willing to help themselves, you can help them. You have no say-so in what happens to you, but you have a say-so in what you do about it. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do. What people do, that's what's different. Hey, we could all tell stories all night long, right? Happenings. But it's not the happenings. It's what you do about it. Somebody says, yeah, but you don't understand the disappointments I've had. Come on. Disappointments are not special gifts reserved for the poor. Everybody has them. The difference is what you do about it. See, life is 10% of what happens to you. It's 90% what you do about it. You ain't got to be washed white as snow because I didn't get that. I still got dirt on me. But show me something that has grown into something beautiful that didn't have no dirt on it. See, you get tripped out because you got dirt on you. But you need dirt on you to develop. You take a seed and throw it on the concrete. Don't put no dirt on it and watch what happens. Dirt is fertilizer. Dirt gives you the strength for your seed to push through. See, you got to have dirt on you to push through something. See, you get mad when haters come your way. You get mad because you get a setback. You get mad because you get a detour. That's just dirt. You get mad because they talking about you. That's dirt. You got to have dirt on you to grow into what God got for you. It was not my education. It wasn't no deal I struck. It was cause of prayer. 
When it looked like I wasn't going to be nothing, I kept praying. You said if I have not because I asked not, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to just keep asking. When they told me you'll never be nothing, I didn't listen to them. I'm going to sit here until you get here. And guess what? He got here. You just got to get to asking. You have not because you ask not. You got some good stuff in you. You're supposed to evolve, not be the same way. We've been trained to be who we were not to be. And as a result, most of us are living a misplaced life. And many times in life, when the very foundation of our life has been shaken, we run to God only to discover that it's God that's doing the shaking. Reckoning taking on right now. See, there's disruptions, there are transformations, and there are decisions. And a lot of people have made the decision to give up. A lot of people have made the decision that I can't make it. A lot of people have thrown in the towel. We rather walk in dignity rather than ride in shame. It's a new day. And it's a new day, it's got to be a new you. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. Sometimes you got to get an attitude about this thing. I've seen people get an attitude about stupid stuff. He looked at me sitting up in a jail cell asking themselves, how did I get here? What I'm saying is common sense, but not common practice. What I'm saying is already in you. This is your moment. You, you've strayed off from this calling in your life. And sometimes you have to, as Edward Albee would say, you have to come back a, lo a long distance correctly. It's your time. Don't deny it. Don't ignore it. We've all had those moments where we say, boy, if I just listen to my first mind, listen. If it's in the direction of where you know in your heart of hearts, you should be gone. I live a life of no regrets. I'm encouraging you to do that. If you can hear me in your heart, you have no idea of what you can do, of what you can accomplish. You have no idea eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store. It's a process to achieve mastery, and quitting does not make it any faster. You got to be willing to go all in for you, for freedom. I just got tired of somebody telling me what time to be there, how much I'm worth. And I remember one time I did all the right things and asked in advance for vacation. And then he said, no. And I remember going back to my desk. I'm getting up and out of here. Nobody's going to treat me like I'm a child, like I'm nothing. Time magazine said the computer was the person of the year. Why? Because you can create a global business with your phone or your computer. And now the majority of money that's being generated in the economy is done at a computer. Going from brick and mortar to click and order. And this, this day where we are right now, the people that are evil, the people that going all out to stop us, to hold us down, we got to be more determined and be willing to do whatever it takes live our dreams. You got to be stronger than the forces working against you. People need to be encouraged. There's pain out here. There are people that are disillusioned out here. People are feeling, feeling weak and powerless out here. And don't know that this is the best time of our lives. We got all the tools we need to do whatever we want to do. Don't focus on the problems. Focus on the solution.
You get up in the morning like that. You get up in the morning and say, all things work together for good. For those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. Lord, whatever I face today, together you and I can handle it. And just say to yourself, this is going to be the best day of my life. Don't forget to pray. Don't be ashamed to pray. Because prayer, prayer changes things. I don't care how dark it looks for you. I don't care what the verdict is. I don't care what the haters say. Prayer changed things. I grew up on a block, man, that it didn't breed success. You had to be something else you come up out of there. Prayer changes things. I was told I would never be nothing. I flunked out of school. Prayer changes things. It's the one thing that's available to everybody at any given time. He ain't ever too busy for you. Do you know that God actually created you to converse with him? Do you know that God would actually love to hear from you? You're not going to make it without God. If you've tried it so far, tell me how that's working out for you. You need God. I've needed him every step of the way. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be standing here today. You need God. You need to tell him that you need him. Tell him that you're just tired of trying to figure it out for yourself. He already know you got problems. God take anybody that want to be saved and he say, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. There will never be a point in your time in your life where it's the right time to do a great thing. If you're waiting for that perfect, perfect moment, that perfect timing is not going to happen. You know what you have to do? You have to create the perfect time and the perfect opportunity and the perfect situation. So that a lot of people become comfortable. They stop growing. They stop wanting anything. They, they become satisfied. People getting ready to go to jobs that they don't like. Jobs that are making them sick. You see, when you're not pursuing your goal, you are literally committing spiritual suicide. When you have some goal out here that you're stretching for and reaching for that takes you out of your comfort zone, you'll find out some talents and abilities you have that you didn't know you had. When the messenger of misery visits you, what are you going to do? What will keep you in the game? There are things that you think you'll never need to know that you may only need to know one time in your life, but that could save your life because you had that knowledge. Unless you attempt to do something beyond that, which you've already mastered, you will never grow. What is it that you looked at at some point in time and you decided that you couldn't do it? That you talk yourself out of it? You're waiting on your next door neighbor to make it happen for you. It may not happen. If you're waiting on your mother or your father, they may be so ancient in their thinking that they don't understand this opportunity that you have. And if you're waiting on them, it may never get done. You don't beg average people to be phenomenal. You don't beg good people to be phenomenal. You just are phenomenal and you will attract phenomenal. What reason can you remember that you can call on, that you can reach on, that can make you get back up? Find that reason. If you're not where you are, if you're not where you want to be, if you don't have what you want, want to have, if you're not where you think you should be at this particular place, it has nothing to do with the system, but it has everything to do with the fact that you're not making the sacrifice. I want you to make that dream become a reality because if you don't, you will be working for somebody else to make their dreams become a reality. Everybody is against you or don't believe in you no more. And let me tell you something, that's a lonely feeling. It's a lonely feeling, particularly people that you're doing it for. Most people take their greatness, take their ideas to the graveyard with them. Listen to me. If it was easy, everybody would do it. There are people right now who are working who don't want to work. There are people who hate their jobs, but they keep getting up to do it. The wealthiest place on the planet is the graveyard. Because in the graveyard, we will find inventions that we never, ever were exposed to. Ideas, dreams that never became reality. Hopes and aspirations that were never acted upon. Question is, what are you going to do with your time? What drives you? And greatness is a lot of small things done well. Day after day, workout after workout, obedience after obedience, day after day. When things don't work out for you, 
when things happen that you could not anticipate, what are the reasons that you can think of that can keep you strong? You will never, ever be successful until you turn your pain into greatness, until you allow your pain to push you from where you are to push you to where you need to be. Stop running from your pain and embrace your pain. Your pain is going to be a part of your prize, a part of your product. I, I challenge you to push yourself. See, it's easy to be on the bottom. It doesn't take any effort to be a loser. It doesn't take any motivation, any drive in order to stay down there on a low level. But it calls on everything in you. You have to harness your will to say, I'm going to challenge myself. I mean that what you did last week don't count. Today, today is the only important day. There are 86,400 seconds in a day, and how you use those are critical. You got 86,400 today, and what you do today is going to see me who you are. Nobody's going to talk about what you did last week. But the biggest enemy you have to deal with is yourself. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. You have this opportunity of a lifetime. It means absolutely nothing if you don't take advantage of it in the lifetime of this opportunity. I got a saying that when life knocks you down, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. And if you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for, to work day and night for, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep. If all that you dream and scheme is about, and life seems useless and worthless without it. See, it's time now. If you want to make this your decade, you've got to start saying yes to your life. You've got to start saying yes to your dreams. Yes to your unfolding future. Yes to your potential. As opposed to saying no. When you die, die on E. Leave no dream left behind, guys. Leave no opportunity left behind. When you leave this earth, accomplish every single thing you can accomplish. Listen to me, you're going to be here one day, but you'll never get here if you give up, if you give in, if you quit. And finally, guys, you got to want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe.